Hi everyone, I'm Rina, a curious Japan traveler, and today I'm going to show you how I made my own kotatsu so that you can get inspired and maybe even make your own. A kotatsu is a traditional Japanese heating table. It keeps your legs warm during the winter months and it makes it just so much more enjoyable to work during the day or to simply spend the evening watching a movie around the table. It's so good, it's really so 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 good. <laughs> Usually they are pretty pricey, especially if you try to import them from Japan, but it's actually really easy to make your own kotatsu. So at first I had plans to make a kotatsu where you can knock down the legs using these thingies for easy storage, but then I was afraid that might make the kotatsu unstable and quite frankly pretty dangerous because there is a heating element underneath the kotatsu, so you always have to be careful not to burn yourself. That leads me to a quick disclaimer. Um, I am not a professional, so the way I work and what I build might be unsafe or dangerous. So if you attempt to try these things by yourself, you do so at your own risk. I strongly recommend asking a professional for help and advice on how to build and use these things safely. Also. This is not a sponsored video, so you can use any kind of suitable table or appropriate materials. Uh, I just found these conveniently available and usable. With that being said, let's see what I've used to build my katatsu. I have one IKEA table called Lack, uh, one additional Lack shelf, one infrared heating panel ordered from Amazon, uh, eight screws, a screwdriver, a handsaw, a screw clamp, wood drill, sandpaper, one blanket and a sheet, um, and also one blanket to put underneath the table, but that's optional. And that's it. <laughs> Where to start? So I did a little bit of research about the average height of kotatsu in Japan and it seems to be about 40 to 35 mm, centimeters, not millimeters, that doesn't make any sense. Now, of course, you don't have to stick to that height, but um, personally, I like to work sitting on the floor and sitting on a table that is too high will make my shoulders and my back hurt like crazy. So I wanted to go as low as possible while still having enough space to sit in front of the table, kind of cross-legged, I guess. Luckily, I had an old leftover luck table standing around in the attic, so I used that first set of table legs to experiment a little bit with the height. Uh, but I guess you can also just, you know, go step by step until you figure out a height that works well for you. If you're using a pillow, by the way, uh, consider that it will take away a little bit of your leg room. I settled for 30 centimeters, excluding the height of the top plate. So in total, it's uh, gonna be a height of 35 centimeters. The luck table legs are partially hollow inside, so be careful while sawing, and don't forget to sand them down afterwards, otherwise your floor might take damage. You could also glue something flat underneath, so just to make it a little bit more proper. I considered getting a, like flat pieces of cork for a bit, but then decided against it because I thought this should be good enough for now. Yeah. <laughs> Now that we have the table legs cut to the right size and ready to go, it's time to put the infrared heating panel onto the back side of the top plate. There are a few things I should mention about that part. So usually, kotatsu have a somewhat protruding electric heating element underneath. It's not easy to get them outside of Japan and they can be pretty expensive. So I have searched for another way to warm up the air underneath the kotatsu. At first, I only used a hot water bottle. Um, it's a first step, I guess, and the blanket will retain some of the heat for sure, but it wasn't enough for me. Then I already own an electric heating blanket, um, so I kind of placed it underneath the kotatsu for a while, but my blanket is kind of unreliable and I also noticed some strange electricity flowing when I was sat on the blanket and was working on my laptop at the same time. So, I don't know, I kind of decided that's not an option for me either. Afterwards, I went online and looked around on Amazon. That's where I found my infrared heating panel. At first, I wasn't entirely sure if it would be such a good idea, but in the end, it seemed like a really nice alternative. And I encourage you to do some research on your own just to see if this technology is for you before you buy any heating panel. But I can tell you what I looked out for. 
it was important to me that it would have an automatic shutdown after it reaches a certain temperature. In this case, it's 80 degrees, which is still very hot and can burn you if you're not careful, but at least there is a shutdown. Ideally, I would have wanted a timer as well, but this one doesn't have one. It does have a control button though, where you can adjust the temperature, which works fine so far. Make sure to check if a heating panel will be okay to use for this specific purpose before buying it. And of course, always follow the installation instructions of your specific panel, uh, regardless of what I do in this video. The heating panel I got has an adhesive backside and has to be glued onto an even surface. As the heating panel does not have a detachable cord, and I also wanted to use my kotatsu during the summer months, I decided to use the shelf plate of my old attic luck table as a detachable element to glue the heating panel on. <laughs> the luck table is hollow on the inside, so depending on how heavy your wood is, this might add quite a bit of weight to your table. So you have to make sure to use appropriate screws for this step, otherwise the hot panel might drop onto your legs and nobody wants that. I'm not entirely sure how long mine will hold up to be honest, but I'm always checking and handling it with care. Do better than me though, any hardware store will probably have professionals to help you pick the right ones I think. So I wiped down the back side of the shelf so the panel would stick well to the wood. By the way, this footage is from last year when my hair was purple. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make sure to test the kotatsu for a while before making any recommendations, but I didn't have time to make a full video back then. After removing the cover, I carefully put the panel in place and gently pressed down on it to make it stick properly. Removing the foil turned out to be a bit trickier as there were some small parts left and you had to be careful not to scratch the surface. Ta-da! This is a good time to screw the legs in. Perfect, that was easy. Now let's drill some holes and screw the heating panel onto the table, shall we? The size of the luck shelf is perfect for this because literally it was made to fit between the table legs. I'll put all of the measurements into the description box by the way. And here we go! <laughs> the most difficult parts are already done at this point. Let's assemble the kotatsu. I put a warm blanket on top of my guza mats to protect them and also to retain more of the heat. Be careful when turning the table as its weight has changed quite a bit with the addition of the shelf. And please don't fall over the cable. Here comes the blanket! And now the top plate. Before I made the first sketches for this kotatsu, I was wondering if the top plate would be attached to the table in some kind of way. I found out that there are kotatsu versions where this is the case, but Often it is not. I guess usually the plate is heavy enough to stay on top without any major issues and it's fairly easily assembled this way. I found this one to be heavy enough for my purposes. I still have to be careful to not pull on the blanket too much while getting up for example, so anything on the table won't move or fall off. Be careful not to spill any liquids, especially when handling electronic devices. As you can see here, the shelf plate is not exactly the same size as the top plate, so if you mind this gap, you could also get a proper sized top plate at the hardware store. 
I was too lazy though, for now this one works perfectly fine for me. And that's it! After plugging in the infrared heating panel, I am able to adjust the temperature via the dimmer. I took some time to figure out the min and max temperature I prefer, but I guess that will vary between every panel and of course per person. After a full winter season with my DIY Kotatsu, I have to say that I'm very happy with it and I didn't experience any issues with it so far. It's just so, so nice and lovely to be able to cozy up underneath it and read or just to work. It's fantastic, it's really so good. Personally, I feel much more productive when I'm comfortable, so I use it quite a lot, but turning the heat on too much makes me super sluggish. So let's be responsible and not overdo it. The good thing is that usually I'm able to turn my regular heating down whenever I use the kotatsu, so it might potentially save some energy. I didn't do the math though, so please feel free to do so. <laughs> Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Also, if you decide to make your own DIY kotatsu, please send me a picture on Instagram via at Brina Goes Japan. Um, I'm always super happy to hear from you. See you soon! <laughs>